Merry Christmas Eve! Yay! Um, it's so good to see everyone here. Um, I hope that you feel excited to see the kids perform. Are you guys excited to perform? Yeah! Yeah! All right. Zaramaya has been doing a little bit of this in the car, so that that's good. They're, they've practiced. Um, it's good to see everyone. I want uh, to welcome you again to Norwood United Methodist. I'm Pastor Brendan. Uh, hopefully you'll get the sense that at Norwood uh, we all know each other. We all love each other. It's a little family. Um, it's a nice intimate church where, where you come and people can uh, ask how you've been. Uh, people have been praying for each other throughout the week. Um, so we're just excited uh, to kind of be together as a family. I'm going to light the candles if I can squeeze through here. I'm going to light uh, the candles of the presence of God. We know that God is literally always present with us, always around us, um, but sometimes we forget it. Uh, so I'm going to light these candles, and I want you to just take a moment to take a deep breath and realize that the one who created you, the one um, above all, uh, is here in this room uh, with us tonight celebrating Jesus' birthday. Uh, so let's take a moment and just center ourselves on the Holy Spirit here in this place. Amen. Uh, please pray with me. Jesus, thank you for coming to be with us. God, creator, thank you for joining us here on this earth, for becoming like one of us so that you could feel what it feels like to hurt, to be excited, to get um, to get a pain in our body, Lord, to be excited with mom and dad, with family, to be lonely, to be angry. Thank you, God, for coming to be like one of us so that we would know that you are with us, that you get us, you understand us. Jesus, my prayer is that we would just experience your love tonight. Uh, the love that you pour and bubble up through kids, um, help it to catch um, our hearts and, and help us to feel the excitement of Christmas again, the excitement of a special surprise. Lord, we just ask that you would show up in a new way for us this Christmas. Help us to feel how real you are, how much you love us and you pursue us and you want to be close to us. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, without further ado, I'm going to turn it over um, to Rochelle um, and the kids. Hello, everyone. Um, so our kids have been practicing only for a couple of weeks. So they are doing a fantastic job with the bells. And um, anyway, um, there isn't anything I can say except that this is such a special night. It's a special night for them as well as for us to see the children because they're such a light in this day, especially um, at Christmas time. It's such a rejuvenation of um, just rebirth and Jesus is coming and his day is here. Um, so we just want you to feel that when you hear them and see their faces while they're playing um, after uh, for the bells. Ready? 
Ready? Ready? One, two, three. recognize that song it was Christ was born on Christmas Day <laughs> so um, but I know that with future practices and this was only the first time that we all got together um, doing this so and I enjoyed it I enjoyed being with them and it's just encouraging um, to have them want to do it so now we're going to sing he's got the whole world in his hands the children are going to sign you don't have to do that but you're encouraged to sing with us if you know this song okay are we ready okay ready Okay, you ready? Okay, one, two, three. He's gone. Ready? He's got the whole world in his hands. 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 He's got the little tiny baby. weren't even here like a couple of the times so I'm so very proud of them thank you for letting them come and being a part of that so they can go and they can sit with you now <laughs> can we get them another round of applause to you? yes good work woohoo alright alright thanks so much Delano thank you um, I'll, I'll ask you to stand now as we sing joy to the world um, if you can 
come up with your own uh, motions, that'd be great as well. Uh, please don't let the kids show you up. Come on. Does this one work too? Yeah, that one works. Okay. Just hold this down. So hold this and then just hold this. Until they sing their song. Yeah. We light, the, we light the candle again of hope for Christmas story shines hope on our lives and we bring all of our stories to this circle. We light again the candle of peace to honor all the places where we have found peace in our lives and all the places for which we pray that peace may come. We light again of uh, the candle of joy to reflect on our celebrations in this season and pray for those who experience uh, feelings of lo loss and loneliness. We light again this candle of love because Jesus Christ was born into human loving and we are born again into the love of God. The birth of Jesus in Bethlehem uh, shows us how to, uh, how to hope, where to find and make peace, why our Christmas customs have meaning and truly what is love too for on this night we meet emmanuel god coming and with us who's lift us up and let us shine
to be the candle tomorrow. Amen. Christmas Hallelujah. You might know this as Leonard Cohen or Jeff Buckley or someone else, uh, but we're going to do a Christmas version of Hallelujah. <laughs>
Wonderful. So we have a few announcements. Uh, you're always, always welcome to join me uh, starting in January on Wednesdays. Wednesdays at 7, we have virtual Bible study discussion. Uh, it's 7 to 8. I stop at 8. Uh, so if you ever want to, Wednesday night, um, there's uh, emails on your bulletins. Uh, you have my email or Pat Beckett's email. You can say, hey, send me the link and we'll send you the link. Um, it's every Wednesday at 7. It's nice, it's nice to just you know, pick each other's brain and just get to know each other with like a few people at once. Uh, so you're always welcome. I'll invite our youth pastor up to introduce himself. And uh, if Andrew, you could cue the uh, video um, of the uh, ugly sweater party um, after his announcement. Uh, I didn't know we were showing it again. Uh, good, af good evening. Uh, it's good to see so many people here. Uh, I see so many uh, new faces, so uh, excited to be able to see you. So my name is Mike. I am the part-time youth pastor here at Norwood, and um, we have youth group every Friday. Um, the first one, well, the next one's going to be starting um, in January. It'll be the first Friday in January. We have it every single Friday from 6 o'clock p.m. to 8 o'clock p.m., and so we come in for the first hour. You know, um, it's for students, I believe, in grades 5 through 12, so we come in for the first hour. Uh, you guys get snacks. You're able to eat pizza sometimes if pastor orders it. I don't like ordering the pizza because I want to save money, but that's a whole different story. Um, but we do have snacks and things. And then the second hour, um, we learn about Christ and we learn about the Bible and we do it in a interactive, fun way. So uh, I would encourage you, for those of you who are here, if you're in anywhere from grades 5 through 12, um, you can kind of come see me afterwards. Uh, I'll be lingering around if you want more information. Or you can be able to come uh, on Friday, that first Friday in January. And I think now we're going to show... Uh, a recap, we had a ugly Christmas sweater party slash Christmas karaoke. Um, I think this was on December 16th, and so uh, you'll see that. Do, do not judge or laugh at the kids singing, um, and don't laugh at mine either as well. So. Amen. All right, so let's clap it up for the youth group. Um, it's a good time. Uh, if you're ever interested in volunteering, let us know. If you're, ever, if you're in high school or middle school, uh, let us know. Uh, we have um, a Nintendo Switch, and, and there's like an ongoing uh, Super Smash tournament that keeps happening. Um, I think everyone can beat me and Pastor Mike, but that's just how it goes. Uh, but please come out. We're also going to take like a trip. We might go to Sky Zone or something uh, in January. So uh, yeah, uh, you're always welcome. Uh, even if you go to a different church, you're always welcome to come Friday at 6. All right. Um, the next thing is um, sometimes we do it for Christmas Eve, sometimes we don't, but it's my favorite part of every uh, morning service, so I wanted to include it. We always ask, like, what's going on in each other's lives? Uh, we want to be praying for each other. We want uh, to not just kind of show up and, and, you know, 
do things for God, but we want to pray for each other and, and show up for each other. So I'm going to pass the mic uh, to the usher, and if you just have one or two words, if you want to say thank you, or if you have something that you're praying about, uh, maybe something's going on in your life, uh, we'll take a few of these prayer requests and then pray together. It's always the first person that has to break the ice, but uh, what's going on? I know there's some prayer requests out there. Yeah, Matthew. Hi, everybody. Um, Casey Romani, I'm Matthew. Um, I'm the person who's in the family, but I just have some words I want to share. Um, I just asked for like, a little prayer for my, for my father. He fell on Tuesday, and he has a screw in his head. So he's doing the rehab, which is good. Yeah. So we just like, pray for him. Definitely. Thank you, Matthew. We're praying for uh, your, your dad, Ed Saber, uh, fell, had surgery. Uh, we're praying for strength and recovery for him. Thank you for lifting that up. Uh, anybody else? Yeah, praise God. So we're praying. We're we're thanking uh, that John's sister came home and is doing better. Um, yeah, that she would continue just to get that all off her, and and that she would continue to grow in strength and energy. Thank you for lifting her up again. Yeah. Um, anybody else? praying that uh, God would hold Ruth Pierce. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, anybody else? There's nothing too small. Any, any, any last thing? Praise God. That's awesome, Jeremiah. Thank you for that. Uh, anybody else? Yep. Don't tell me to score the Eagles keep my own Please, no spoilers. I would like to ask prayers for Bill Fisher's family in the passing of his father on Sunday. The funeral was yesterday. So I think we should all remember him, his family. Yes, thank you. Praying for Bill and the whole Fisher family uh, as his dad passed. Yeah, thank you. Anybody else? We have time. This is this is when we get to know each other. Uh, anybody else? All right, let's pray together. Jesus, we thank you that you want to know the particulars. You want us to get into community and get to know each other. And God, there's nothing too uh, big or ugly or messy for us to take to you. So God, we just bring all this to you um, and just know that you're going to handle things. Even the things that we didn't pray about today, uh, we give that to you as well, God. You know what's on our hearts. You know what we're thinking, God. And, and sometimes we don't even know what to pray for, God, but we give it to you, Lord. We know you're going to do something in our life. We know that you're still alive and you're still working in this world. Jesus, we pray for Ed um, as he fell, God. We just pray that uh, you would uh, just strengthen him, God, um, after this surgery. Help, it to, uh, help him to walk again, God. Help him just to feel his energy and strength and uh, come back to him, Lord. In Jesus' name, 
Lord, we pray for John's sister, Lord. Um, after uh, the fluid got off her lungs, God, we just pray that it would stay off, God, that her strength would come back, God, that her healing uh, would be near, God, that, that she would just continue to be strong. We thank you that she's home. Uh, we just pray for continued recovery in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for Ruth Pierce, God, uh, for the, all the uh, people that have been uh, at Norwood for so long, um, for all the ones that, that love uh, them. Lord, we just pray that you hold Ruth Pierce now, God. Praise you, Lord. Uh, Lord, we thank you for Sincere getting better, God. Um, Lord, we thank you for uh, Jeremiah's heart to lift him up every Sunday. Uh, and we just thank you that you, um, you're still a miracle-working God, God, uh, that you got this young, uh, young man, Lord, who might not have made it, God. You, you got him better, God. So we just thank you for Sincere, for the calling that you have on his life, God. Bless him. Uh, and Jesus, we just pray for uh, the whole Fisher family right now as they mourn. Uh, be with them, God, as, as, they, as they mourn, Lord, as this is a hard Christmas for them. Uh, be with them. Help them to feel each other close. Uh, pray for Bill, our brother, Lord. We just pray that he would feel how much his church loves him. Uh, Lord, we pray for... Um, Lord, Bill Fisher's dad, Lord, to be held by you now in your arms in heaven, God. Thank you that death is not the end, Lord, that there is life afterwards, Jesus. Um, and Lord, we pray for everyone who's mourning and everyone who's feeling conflicted this Christmas, uh, that they would feel hope, that they would feel you close. In Jesus' name, we pray. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, please stand with me one more time for uh, Angels We Have Heard on High.
Amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Good evening, everybody. Today I'll be reading Luke 2, verses 1 through 20. In those days, Caesar Augustus ensued to declare that a census should be taken of the Roman world. This will be the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judah, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for a baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there, there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I'll bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloth and laying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried over and found Mary and Joseph, and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, and they spread the word concerning what had happened, told them about the child, and all who heard it were amazed at, amazed at them. But Mary treasured up, and all these things prone them in the heart. The shepherd returned, glorif glorifying and praising God for all the things that had heard and seen, which were just as it has been told. This is the story of Christ. All the young people uh, to get up here real quick. I need your help uh, preaching the sermon. Uh, so I need you guys to all try to fit in between these four flowers. Um, try to squeeze in, please, and try to do some jumping jacks without touching each other. You ready? So, wait, 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 before you start, before you start, let me explain. Let me explain. Everyone get in between the flowers. Okay, so Jesus came in, in, in his mother's womb, uh, and Mary, not yet, not yet, Mary and Joseph came to an inn, and an inn is, is what? Like a hotel or something, right? And so they knocked on the door of the hotel, and we're like, can we come in? We're cold, we're pregnant, and they said there's no room in the inn, so this inn must have been crowded, it must have been just full of people. Is there any other young people that want to try to do this challenge of jumping jacks without touching anyone else in a little tiny crowded inn? Anybody? High schoolers, come on. Middle schoolers, come on up. Okay, okay, so I want you guys to pretend like you're in this crowded inn. You gotta be inside the flowers. Inside the flowers, Aramaya. And on the count of three, oh, oh, by the way, this is an inn, so you got neighbors on both sides, and they're trying to sleep. So if you could just really keep it down, don't make any noise, and do some jumping jacks, because I know you've been waiting in the service for a while. Uh, do some jumping jacks without touching anyone. Ready, set, go. I hear you. Too much noise, too much noise. Can you make it a little bit quieter, please? Too much. Shh, shh. You're, you're banging on the floors. Can you do it completely silently? Maybe don't even move your feet. Yep, yeah, but still like your body, you should pretend like you're still doing it. Okay, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay, did, did Mary and Joseph, did Jesus, like the most important person ever, was he born in a comfy uh, sofa bed in some hotel in? Where was he born? Where? Where was he born? 
Yeah, over there. Around some around a bunch of stinky loud animals, right? Hey. Yes. In a zoo. In a zoo. Yeah, basically. So I'm gonna spread this out and now you get all the space. Now I need you uh to make uh jumping jacks as loud and fun as you can make jumping jacks. Make them all jealous. Woo! Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. All right, and maybe you could do them spinning if you can try that really fast. All right, all right, good. Now that you've got all your energy worked up, go back to your parents and, and annoy them the rest of the sermon. Good job. Yes, thank you. Um, so the whole point of that, everyone, is that uh, sometimes we don't fit in small little spaces in the inn. Uh, even in church can be a small little space. Uh, sometimes we don't fit into ties. Uh, sometimes we need some space to breathe, to jump around. Uh, as the kids know, it was like a zoo where Jesus was born. Uh, there were animals, there were people jumping around, maybe some sheeps, uh, maybe baying. There's probably poop all over the floor. Um, everything went uh, in the manger that night. Um, so if you'll put the slides up, I want to talk to you about um, kind of making room uh, for God, how God makes room for you, uh, and how God is okay with the mess, is okay with the excitement and the joy of tonight. Um, so in Luke chapter 2, we hear this beautiful story about a Savior being born to us. And we can get into all the details of why the Romans want every single person counted and how Mary and Joseph came on a donkey to their, to their little village. We can get into that. But as I was reading it, again, we've probably all heard it a few times before. As I was reading it, it stood out to me that there was no room in the inn. And we all get that. It means that they're really poor. They didn't have money to be like, I know that extra room you got. I know there's some wet room somewhere. Uh, they didn't have any of that. They didn't make reservations. They just showed up and there was no room for them. Uh, and so what does that teach us? That God, the creator of everything, was born in this open air manger with animals, with uh, maybe some kids running around trying to figure out what all the commotion is. What does that teach us? Um, I believe it teaches us that God wants us to be our full, messy selves. Uh, I believe that's why, uh, when, while everything was said and done, the Savior of the world, God, was born in a barnyard. Uh, barnyards are not pretty. Mangers look real pretty when we put them on tables, but actually there's hay everywhere. Uh, there's there's um, disruptive, rude cows. Um, there's poop uh, that's just somewhere. Um, it's not a pretty cleaned up space. And yet this is where God came to be born. It's crazy. Uh, you kind of think of the king of kings, you think of God, and you kind of want to put uh, God like on a nice white tablecloth or something. But actually when God came to be with you, God found the messiest most open space to be in, and said, I'll be born there. Um, I'm going to be uh, with my people who are really messy. Uh, God knows that you don't clean your rooms all the time. Uh, God knows that sometimes it takes you a while to get out of bed in the morning. Uh, God knows that you're messy. God created you. Uh, we're a messy creation, and God wants us uh, to be messy, not to try to clean up and pretend um, sometimes, and I'm guilty of it too, sometimes we only talk to God like when we feel like we have the right words or we'll be like, God, you know, just thank you. I know that it's not working out, but I know you're going to bless me. Or I know you're so good. Um, God is probably waiting to, around and saying like, no, be real with me. What's really going on? Uh, that's the God we have, the God that comes in a manger, in a messy, dirty place and says, I want to be with you however you feel right now in your real, real mess. Be real with me. Tell me what's going on. Uh, that's the kind of God we have. Um, there was no room at the inn. Uh, let's read the scripture. Uh, in verse 7, it says, She gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him in cloths and laid him in a manger because there wasn't room for them in the inn. Uh, so we, we think of, um, you know, a beautiful baby in a, in a white linen perfect thing. It says that she wrapped them in cloths. Not one cloth, but, but cloths. Probably pieces of cloth, probably not that clean. She wrapped him in what she had and laid him among the barn animals in a manger because there wasn't room for them in the inn. And we can take this in the negative, and I, I agree, it's, it's really unfortunate there wasn't room for this pregnant lady in the inn, 
Um, I mean, come on, let, let, let's, let's make room for each other when we're in need. But also, maybe there just wasn't room for what God was doing in the inn. Maybe God was doing something big and bold. Maybe God was trying to bring God's full divine self down into like our everyday messy lives. Maybe God needed a bigger space for that. Uh, there wasn't room for them in the inn. And so, um, I believe God came to a wide open barnyard for a reason. A uh, place that didn't have all those walls. You didn't have to check in with the innkeeper. Um, God just wanted to be born uh, where God could meet people, uh, where the shepherds could bring their sheep, uh, where people could just be real, just be their messy selves. So God was born in a barnyard, a place where there was room for everyone to come as their full, messy selves. Uh, you even see these kids. It's a beautiful painting. Uh, I'm sure there were some kids that were staying up a little late and heard some crazy thing happening at the at the barnyard next door. Um, anyone could come and just peek in, you know, uh, peek over the cows. What, what's going on? What's all this commotion? Um, everyone was available uh, and had room to be their full messy selves on that night. And so God wants to be with you, sisters and brothers. Uh, I, know you, I know I put on a red tie, and I know we dressed up a little bit, uh, but God wants uh, to meet us when we're in our work outfits, uh, when we're like this uh, group of people celebrating Mary and Jesus, uh, just as they are, just messy and coming off of life. That's where God wants us. Again, God doesn't need to meet us in church or in our Sunday best or with our fancy words. God just wants to meet us and how we're really feeling in our messy selves. Um, so please don't put on a bow. Please don't just say nice words to God. Please don't just think about God when you're in church. Please, when you're lying in bed and you're just like moaning and trying to figure out what you're going to do the day, um, try, to, try to talk to God in that. Try to let God just, just in. Just, just let God know how you're feeling. God wants to be with you in your mess. Um, come to God with your mess, your desires, your fears, your boo-hoo cry. Uh, your full self, because there's room in the barnyard. There's more than enough room um, in the barnyard. Maybe not in the inn, uh, maybe not always in our workplaces or in church, but with God, there's always enough room for you and your full, messy self. Um, finally, um, you know, I, I get that life is hard and good. Some things are happy and sad. Even Christmas is happy and, and also sad. You might be missing some people, but glad you're here today. Um, it's all really complicated, and God knows it. Uh, please don't try to make it simple and try to make it fit into a God box. Bring it to Jesus. Um, so when, my, when I had my daughter, uh, my daughter had jaundice. So like the very first day I was in the hospital, and I was happy, but I was also afraid for her life. Uh, life is just really complicated and, and confusing sometimes. Um, God gets that. Um, God breaks through when we're the most real. Uh, you can experience God when, when, you're, um, when you're quiet uh, and in your quiet, still place. But you can also experience God when you're really just crying out, like, God, I really need you right now. Um, on Sunday, I preached a sermon about like four weeks ago, and then on Monday, it took me like two or three hours to get out of bed because I was just not excited about the day. It was a Monday. I didn't know what I wanted to do with myself. I was like, wow, this is great. Um, and I, I got to the point where eventually I got out of bed. Someone called me, and I said, yeah, I need to pray. Uh, and I actually started crying just because I was telling God real honestly, like, God, I don't feel you real right now. Like, I just preached, but where are you? Like, are you alive? Like, are you in my life? Um, when we're real with God, when we show God our mess, God can break through and become real to us. Um, and finally, Jesus meets us where we are. Uh, Jesus didn't meet us uh, in the inn. Sometimes we think that, um, you know, Jesus sees how, how great we are and, and wants to meet us at our best. But Jesus knew how messy we were. So Jesus met us in a barnyard. Um, and Jesus knew uh, that he wanted real people as disciples. So he met people while they were fishing, while they were doing their regular everyday life. That's the type of God that we have. Not a God that we have to put on fronts for, but a God that meets us and wants our full selves, wants our messy selves. Uh, and so finally, when God had this big announcement to make, this big Christmas Eve announcement, uh, God didn't write it nice and neat uh, and give it to the emperor. God didn't tell it to the Roman soldiers to proclaim. God filled the whole sky 
Uh, God took up the most space God could and told peasants, told the sheep people, and told all the sheep, Come, for unto you a Savior is born. Uh, it was a messy and fun and big event that God put on that night. Um, and this is the sign. In, in verse 12, it uses this language of a sign from God. And I believe that this is your sign uh, tonight, that this is your Savior. This isn't just uh, your parents' or grandparents' story, your, 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 this thing that was passed on in the Bible. I believe that this is your story. This is your Savior. Because it says in verse 12, uh, the angels told all the sheep people, you know, don't be afraid. I know we've got wings. I know you're freaking out. Don't be afraid. That's not the, the freaking out wings part. That's not in the Bible. Um, but they say, but they do say, don't be afraid, because every time an angel comes up in the Bible, everyone freaks out. Um, the angel says, don't be afraid, for a Savior has been born. And then verse 12, this part is in the Bible. This will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in claws and lying in a manger. And I believe that is kind of the important part of this sermon, that, that the sign is, the sign that this is your Savior and not just something that you always hear about each year, is that the Savior is lying in a barnyard. That means that this is your Savior. Because you're not super clean. You're, you're not super neat and, and, and fixed up. You're not perfect. This is your Savior. The one who's lying in a barnyard, who's messy, who has bad days and good days. Um, they're lying in a manger and they're, they're tattered with cloths, but they're here for you. Uh, this is your Savior, sisters and brothers, because I know you're messy. I know you're real and human, just like all of us. Uh, and so here's your Savior in a barnyard. Uh, that's basically all I have to say. Um, however complicated you might feel uh, at Christmas, um, however you might feel in 2023 or coming off of this pandemic, uh, God wants to bring it, uh, God wants you to bring it to God. Um, know that God is with you. That's the biggest point of Christianity is that God came down to us and said, I want to live this life with you. I want to walk with where you walk, I want to be a person like you. Know that God is living with you. Uh, and so if you feel all messy and you don't know uh, what to say, just, just say Jesus. Uh, just put on a worship music. Just somehow include God in that because God is comfortable in the mess. God uh, appeared to you in the mess. God came to you in a barnyard uh, because God wants to be in your mess. Uh, so sisters and brothers, uh, celebrate, because for unto you tonight a child is born. Your Savior is really messy. Your Savior meets you in a barnyard with animals and with the stink of life and with the complications of life. This is the God you serve. Uh, Jesus is here with you and wants you to be messy and to be honest with God. So let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for your for your presence with us, God. We thank you that you chose to come to us, and we ask that tonight it would be real again. Jesus, that it wouldn't just be a story, that we would feel you here. I really believe, Jesus, that you walk next to me, that you're in my heart, you're in my thoughts, you're just around me, God. So I ask that you would be real and alive to each one of us, God. We may not be fully convinced. We may feel like our mess is like we're going to figure it out first. But God, show up. Interrupt our lives. Show up and help us wonder what's happening. Help us feel your presence. Jesus, we want to feel your Holy Spirit right now as we go in this Christmas season. We want to feel like you're alive, God, like you're moving in this world. Jesus, be real with us. Be in our mess. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Um, I believe now is the exciting point where we turn the candles off. Uh, so if we turn the lights off, uh, Pastor Mike, if you could hit the light switches. Um, you should all have candles. If you don't have a candle, wave your hand and an usher will get you a candle. We need some candles down here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to light a candle. Um, so this is the Christ candle. This is our God who came down from heaven, from the beautiful light somewhere out there, uh, into this world. 
uh, the world has seen a great light and the darkness has not overcome it. So as I pass this around, um, I want you to know that God is with you. God is really close. God doesn't care how you feel or, or what you showed up uh, dressed as today. Um, God just wants you to know that God is with you, that God loves you. Um, Jesus came um, to a manger, uh, and Jesus wants you to be real and honest and messy with God. Uh, so as, I, as we pass these flames, um, you can stand and we'll sing Silent Night together. You'll notice that kind of the darkness starts to, to fade away. There's a lot of darkness in the news and in our own personal lives sometimes and our mental health. But, but with Christ, it, it kind of starts to fade away when we can pass it around to each other, when we can love each other, talk about Jesus together. It kind of starts to fade. Um, and so as you pass this candle, as you wait for your turn to pass the candle, uh, I want to invite you to think about how you can include God in your mess, how it's okay to be you, and it's okay to bring God into whatever you're experiencing right now. Please stand, and, and we'll sing Silent Night until the room is full of light. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round yonder, and all is calm.
And now receive the benediction. In Jesus' name, go, because you are blessed and highly favored. You are so loved. God knows your name. God knows your desires, your fears, your dreams. And God is calling you to walk with God and see it all play out. Go, because God has come to you messy, in a manger, with sheep and hay, and you can be your full messy self with God. Go in the peace of Jesus Christ. Amen.